Nice. So we've been having this ongoing conversation about um, what we can let go of and uh, I love it because Daniel's usually comes up with this idea that we can't really let go of anything, you know, the uncomfortable stuff, right. is all useful, um, all the shadow work, the dark parts of ourselves, it's all needed. We can't just let go of it. And we've been using the language a lot of, you know, breathe in fresh chi and release the stagnant chi, release the old chi, let go of whatever you're holding on to. And right. so we're kind of going, we're going to take a couple steps back from that verbiage. And I think the only thing that we've really come to the conclusion of is that the only thing we can let go of is resistance. And this entire practice of yoga and Qigong is about letting go of resistance. And that resistance may manifest in our body in our joints and our muscles, our aches and pains. But ultimately, it's also part of a greater resistance in our mental process, in our spiritual development. You know, it's all connected. So when we let go of resistance, then the current of life, chi, can flow through the body. And we can achieve this balance, this level of balance a greater level of health and well-being mentally, spiritually, physically. So as we go through our exercises, we're just trying to kind of stir up and figure out where the resistance is in the body. Um, you know, you could go through a psychotherapist and mentally talk out your resistances and that would all be in the head. Right. But yeah. since they manifest, in the body it's all part of the same system all we need to do is go in and try to find the the discomfort and then once we find it we can begin to lessen it begin to release our resistance around it with our breath the movement all that good stuff so that's all this practice is we're just diving in to figure out where the resistance is Right. So, and then we start, you know, by centering ourselves, which involves the physical, mental, and spiritual. So, right, we begin our, our centering process at the base level, we'll just say the physical level, and we just kind of wiggle around and we feel into our body, trying to find this form that provides the least resistance and that least resistance is usually this straight spine, right? The channel up the back of the, the spine is open and elongated. So we wiggle into our sit bones. We roll our shoulders back. Ah, oh, we're going to take some deep breaths. So we're not holding. A couple deep breaths out the mouth. Even just shaking things off, flicking out fingers. Ah, and just brushing the head down the backs of the shoulders, just brushing the shoulders off, shaking it all out. Ah. And now that we've kind of felt and explored our physical form, we find the breath, which integrates the other pieces. So we can bring the tip of the tongue just gently to the roof of the mouth. Relax the lips and jaw. And just breathe in and out of the nose. And we take our attention to the low dantian, the abdomen area. And we give our brain something to do, right? We're just gonna hang out in the belly. Feel the belly as it expands. Imagine the inner shape it takes as it expands. And 
And then we could turn our attention to a little bit of a longer exhale. Pulling the belly button in towards the spine. Spending a couple extra seconds exhaling. And then we gently begin to add that little pause in between the inhale and exhale. Maybe bringing the finger and the thumb together. And as we breathe into our center, we allow all of the pieces to just fall into place. And we have this nice smooth breath, nice pause. There is no resistance, just breath. And if resistance shows up in a muscle or in your monkey mind, just bring your attention back to your belly. Maybe even deep in the breath, slowing it down. And for a few more breaths, just feel the breath now just move through your whole form. Not just the belly, but just the whole body. I'm even imagining the breath moving around the outside of us. Like you're inhaling through all of the pores in your body. Take one more deep breath. And slowly exhale out the mouth. Releasing your tongue, your fingers. Ah, and yeah, coming back to the physical form, shaking it out. Ah, hmm. Let's do a few little just kind of wake up maneuvers here before we get down onto our back. And we'll just start with our neck. And we're just gonna do some head rolls. And we'll just start by dropping the chin down to the chest and then working the chin over towards one collarbone and then slowly dropping that ear down towards the shoulder and then rolling the head and neck all the way around to the other side bringing the opposite ear to the opposite shoulder here. Dropping the chin down again towards the collarbone. And continue your head rolls like that. Nice and slow. Nice breath. Noticing where we hit little pockets of resistance. Mm -hmm. 
next time your chin comes down to the chest, you go ahead and go the opposite direction a couple times. Deep breaths. And here's our range for the day. Uh, and next time your chin comes down to the chest, just pause there. Let your head hang for a couple moments. Deep breath. Slowly lift up the head. Mm. And we'll just bring the arms out in front of us a little bit. Just kind of straighten the arms out. And we're going to isolate the shoulders as we bring them onto the front of the body. Right. Just roll the shoulder blades under the front. Lift them up. Bring them into the back plane. Drop them down. Bring them into the front. Up. Back. Down. Uh, and change direction. Uh, one more round. Uh, and shake it out. Mm. Let's bring the hands up. Yeah, you're already there. <laughs> Just give the hands a little shake. Pause, take a big breath. Ah, flip the hands over. Same thing. Ah. Ah. All right, let's take one hand to the top of the head and just pat. Big inhale through the nose. Exhale out the mouth. Ah. Ah. Down to the third eye. Bringing two hands to the tops of the cheekbones. All right. Every little bit of discomfort we feel through this process is the resistance. So just find it and poke it a little bit, like you're kind of poking a wasp nest. Take a deep breath. <sighs> the deep breath just assures the body that nothing's wrong. It's okay to let go of that resistance, whatever it may be. Ah, <sighs> it's as simple as that. We can just reset how we deal with resistance. Patting down the sides of the face. Uh, and go down and then bring two fingers, one on either side, and just trace your jawbone up all the way until it kind of hits the bottom of the ear. And slowly open the jaw and find those little, little nooks that are created when you open your jaw. And just massage your way through some of that. Ah. Find that a lot of our frustration <laughs> with the way the world is, our tension gets held in the jaw. Ah, because it's such a strong muscle, it can hold it. Ah, take a couple deep breaths out the mouth. Ah, and just relax the jaw. Ah. Oh. Nice. And then just pat down the sides of the neck. Give yourself a little pat on the back. And just squeeze your shoulders for a moment. And let your elbows relax and just squeeze the shoulders. And take another deep breath here. Just let the weight of the world let, let go of it. Ah, the world's going to be just fine. Ah. 
then just wipe it off, shake out the hands, flick out the fingers. And we'll go to tapping under the collarbone. Ah. Ah. Making our way through stom stomach and lung points. I think the, the stomach ones are the, the, the more narrow ones. As we make our way out towards our shoulders, we're hitting the lung points. And it's been pretty smoky here. So I've been definitely feeling the lung. Ah, and shake it out. We're going to do something cool. This is, I believe this is called lung two, lung one, lung two. And it's a meridian that goes from, this is my left shoulder. And I'm right in the notch of the left shoulder here. And it goes right to my left thumb. So right there on my left thumb. So I'm going to just take my index finger and place it right on the thumb there. And place one or two fingers here on the top of the meridian on the left side. And then just relax the hands and just take a few deep breaths here. And just uh, find a little stillness, deep breath. And we've explored the idea that the lungs hold our grief. They, they surround the heart like armor. And so usually whenever I hit this point, I feel a little sadness. So it's just kind of natural now. Just taking some deep breaths here. Ah, just clearing this energetic pathway associated with the lungs. And it's okay that we have grief, right? It's part of living, but if we resist feeling the grief, which is natural, <laughs> then we, and you know, build resistance. <laughs> ah, and let the breath clear that resistance. Ah, one more big one. Ah, ah, let go, shake it out. Ah, all right, let's go to the sternum, the center of the chest. Ah, the heart. Ah. And then out to the side bodies, wiggling, trying to wiggle back towards those spleen points. Ah. brush off, flick out the fingers, and we'll just hinge forward. We'll take the backs of our hands and just rub up and down on the kidneys a little bit. Kidneys and low back. Ah, and since we're going to be focusing on low back, this is just our first energetic move towards releasing some tension in the low back. Deep breath. Right? And we put our intention there just by the movement. Like right? we're telling the body, <laughs> this is what I intend to do next to release some resistance in the low back. Ah. Ah. And shake it out. All right. One more thing while we're up here. Let's go for the center of our palm. Find a thumb in the center of the palm and dig around in there. Mm. And once again, it's one thing to dig around and just kind of massage and that feels good and the muscles get released, but really we're still looking where is the most tender point there? Dig in, go for the angles. 
See if you can find the most uncomfortable spot and then hold it and then take those breaths. <sighs> just the breaths, just stillness and pressure. <sighs> Nice. Release, brush off the hands, and switch sides. And since I've been building a lot, using my right hand way too much, <laughs> this is the one I'm going to try to really spend a little bit of extra care with. Ah. Hmm. And deep breaths. All right, brushing off. All right, here's our our magnetic wrist roll. So starting here, just imagine that magnet pulling those wrists together. And the weirdest move is just bringing the hands then to the pinky side. The elbows then begin to splay out as the hands come together back to back. And then we need to drop the fingers down toward facing us, roll them down. Nice. And then we bring the hands forward a little, we roll the thumbs together as they come up and right back to where we started. Boom. We'll continue like that. Little fingers come together, backs of the hands come together, fingers point towards us, down and up. Ah. And then we kind of, now that we've told the body what to do. We can kind of just roll with that magnetic wrists. Ah, and we feel that nice stretch in the forearms as we go down. Ah, our elbows get a nice little turning. Ah, and we'll come up and once again, we'll change direction. We'll go thumbs forward backs of the hands up <laughs> yeah <laughs> and do that again right thumbs come forward palms forward hands drop down here we go the backs of the hands roll together they face us and they come back up <sighs> And nice, and one more. All right. Give the hands a little bit of action here. Ah. We'll rest the elbows down, relax. Those warm palms right into the sockets of the eyes. Hands some deep breaths, inhale through the nose, exhale out the mouth. Just focus on that pressure behind the eyes. Releasing any resistance, overusing the brain, overusing the mind. Ah, just resetting. And slowly. Whew. That one always makes me a little lightheaded. So let's just take a couple breaths. Ah. Ah. All right. Whew. All 
right, let's start. Uh, hmm. Let's start with our two uh, supported poses. And this is traditionally, you know, called a restorative pose. I guess any yoga pose, I guess any yoga pose that you're in and hold for a while is technically restorative, but mostly the restorative poses are when you have props and you're kind of laying down. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna do the two that we usually do, right? We have our head block is upright and we have our other block nice and flat right in the middle of the mat and I believe this is called fish pose and so we'll set up our blocks hmm. <laughs> And this is going to help us open up the shoulders and the hips because we'll do a floating bridge next. But with just using gravity and just letting go of some resistance. Great way to just kind of open some things up. So work your way back eventually onto your elbows. Knees are bent, feet are on the floor. And you might need to wiggle your way onto that first block, which should support your shoulder blades. And just roll those shoulders onto the back body so you can feel the flats of the shoulder blades like a nice platform on that first block. You can support your head with your opposite hand and bring your other hand around to position that head block. So you've made yourself a little recliner. Uh, once again, that shoulder blade block should not really be digging into your back anywhere. It should just land on the shoulder blades. Mm. You can bring your arms out to the sides, bring your palms up facing the ceiling, which is going to just help open your chest a little bit more. And then we just find some deep breaths here. We're opening up the rib cage. And if this feels like uh, too easy, you want to get a little bit more opening in your upper chest, you support your head with one hand, and you can lower that head block down to its middle level. Or you can continue lowering your head block down even further. Hmm. We're just looking for this expansion in the upper chest. And with each breath, trying to release any tension there. Uh, opening up that cage around the heart. So maybe the heart can breathe a little more freely. And there's fluids all around the heart. And we expand the chest like this, and it really allows those fluids to circulate. Just breathe into the center of the chest by using the belly.
You feel the heat building behind the shoulder blades there. more big breaths. If you've lowered the blocks, you bring your head block back up to its full upright position, right? Just like the plane. Come to your full upright position, getting ready to land. Ah, take another breath. Support your head with one of your hands and we're gonna just roll off the blocks to either side. Just roll off the blocks, coming into fetal posture. Just resting, kind of curling up on the side. And you begin to feel your shoulder blades kind of let go, that heat kind of flushes through the back body. Ah. All right, so now we're going to roll back onto our back and kind of just nudge these blocks out of the way and grab a hold of one of them. All right, we'll just set that one off to the side where you can grab it. So we're going to move into just some windshield wipers before we do our supported bridge. So once again, lift up one side of the chest, slide a shoulder blade behind you, do the same thing with the other side so you're propped up on those shoulder blades again. And then we'll toe heel our feet wide to the wide edges of the mat. Mm. Put a little length in the back of your neck. Take a deep breath. And exhale the knees over to the right. with your knees over to the right, the resistance usually appears in the top of the left hip. I just feel into that deep breath. With each exhale, maybe a little more resistance leaves the hip. Allow your left ear to drop towards the left shoulder, bringing this twist all the way up into the head and neck. Inhale your head back upright. Take a breath. And then inhale your knees back upright. Take a breath. Next exhale, we'll drop the knees over to the left. Feeling a little bit into that top right hip. Dropping the right ear towards the right shoulder.
Inhale the head up. And inhale the knees up. Let's straighten one leg out and then the other leg. Bring the arms up overhead. Uh, stretch the fingertips away from your crown. Point your toes. Just get a full body stretch. Big breath. Uh, and another one. Pull your toes back towards you. Relax your hands a little. And then just roll the ankles and wrists. So make some circles with your ankles and wrists. Ah. And change direction. Ah. All right. Relax your hands and arms down by your side. We'll bend one knee and then the other. Mm. All right, we're setting up for bridge pose. So wiggle those shoulder blades back under the back just a little bit more. Bring your feet to hip width distance apart. Try to get them parallel, even though you can't see them. And scooch your heels towards the buttocks as much as you can. Or scooch your buttocks towards your heels, whatever's easier. Grab a hold of one of your blocks, that one that's close by. Lay it flat and wide so that your hips can land on it. But before we put the block under there, let's go ahead and activate the feet. Activate the shoulders down into the floor. Even push the head back into the mat. And as you lift your hips up with the inhale, your knees travel over your toes. Your knees move away from you. Lift the hips and exhale, come back down. And just do that a few times with your breath. Inhale, exhale. All right, pause, come on down. Take a big breath, grab a hold of your block. Inhale, lift your hips and slide the block under. Once again, you may need to push that block down towards your hips a little further. We don't want any part of the block touching the lumbar spine. So any part of the soft back should not be in contact with the block. We all hips, all tailbone, basically. Ah, once you've got your block into position, relax your arms down to the sides, palms down, and breathe. And while it's pretty nice to just completely let go here, let's uh, bring some muscle energy back in and inhale and pull about 50% of the weight off the block. So you float your bridge off your bridge support just a little bit. And then you can exhale, relax back down onto it. Just alternate, just using a little muscle energy, tensing things up as you inhale the hips up, maybe even come off the block a little, and then let go, exhale down, release. Once again, if you're so inclined, you can inhale, you can bring the block up to its a middle height, if that's available, or you just leave it low. You get to challenge yourself as much as you want, or as little. Mm. 
Just feel your breath move across the front of the hips, the front of the pelvis. Circulating chi through that whole area. A few more breaths here. And we'll inhale up, remove the block, and slowly lower the hips all the way to the ground. And just pause. All right. All we're gonna do here is just straighten out one leg. Doesn't matter which one. We're gonna use the foot that's on the ground to now just push ourselves as we roll ourselves onto our belly. So I just kick off that other foot. We're gonna roll all the way onto the belly. Ah. And we're gonna move into Sphinx pose, a little back bend. And so if you have a blanket nearby, you can work that blanket under your hips to provide a little bit of padding for the front of your pelvis. Mm. So maybe we take a minute to do that. Get a little padding. And then when you've got your padding in place, just come back down to your belly. You can send your elbows out to the sides, bring your hands together as a little pillow for your head, and just rest the side of your head on the hands. Hmm. And just breathe into the low back. It should get a nice flush of energy from our supported bridge. Switch your head, just switch your, your ear over to the other ear. So we're getting a nice little neck stretch on the other side. And then we'll come bring our head to center and just kind of rest your chin down on the mat. And we're going to slowly bring our elbows under the shoulders, bring our forearms out in front of us into this sphinx shape. So palms are down, forearms are nice and parallel, and just work those elbows directly under the shoulders. And relax a little bit here. Mm. Wiggle your hips a bit. And now we're going to kind of strengthen the foundation of our Sphinx pose. So lift the right leg up, point the toes, reach the right leg back, placing the toenails down on the mat. Push the top of the foot down. Lift that kneecap just a bit. It's pretty easy to kind of get a little kind of a charley horse in your top of your foot here if you push too hard. So just relax. If that happens, you're gonna have to bend your toes and kind of stretch your foot out. Anyway, just something that can happen as you do this. Lift your left leg up, reach your toes back, place your toenails down, lift the kneecaps, and now tighten the buttocks, tuck the tailbone. 
and just get a lot of muscle energy pushing down through the low part of the body. The hips are pushed down, the toes are pushed down, but the knees are rising. Now grasp the mat with your fingertips and pull yourself like you're dragging yourself across the mat. You're going to lengthen your spine here. The shoulder blades slide onto the back. Take a deep breath. Keep that tailbone activated as your gaze slowly rises up into Sphinx Pose. Continue dragging the spine, creating space between the spine, between the vertebrae. Breathe. One more big breath and slowly relax. Bring your elbows out to the sides. Rest the side of your head down on your hands. Take a deep breath. Ah, wiggle the hips. Switch over to your other ear. Wiggle the hips. All right, let's come and do that whole sequence just one more time. We'll move through a little faster. Let's bring the forearms down to the ground, elbows under the shoulders. Mm. Lift the right leg, reach it back, place it down. Lift the left leg, reach it back, place it down. Push your hips down into the mat. Tuck your tailbone. Use your forearms on the sticky mat. Drag yourself long. Breathe. Shoulder blades slide to the back body. Breathe. Slowly lift your gaze. These back bends aren't about cranking on the low back. If you just try to crank your way up, you're going to kind of hinge and pinch at the low back. More than anything, you're just trying to drag the spine longer and arc it up. A couple more breaths. And then exhale. Elbows out to the sides. Bring your head down to your hands. Gently wiggle the hips. All right. We're going to make our way back onto our back now. So... You can straighten out the right arm. Bring your right ear to rest on the right arm. Use your left hand to push yourself all the way onto the back. Ah, rolling onto the back. Ah, here we go. Now we're going to do this is our final kind of move on the mat. Ah, and this is our... Uh, Kind of bent knee, cross the body twist move. So the way we start this is we come into get like like we're prepping for bridge pose, right? So bend your knees, bring your heels towards your buttocks. We're just going to lift the hips up just fractionally and slide them to the right a couple inches. Straighten your left leg out on the ground. Reach your left hand to grab your right knee. Your right foot will come off the ground. So you've now got a hold of your right knee with your left hand. Your foot's off the ground. Now the, the critical point here is our anchor. 
So our right arm goes all the way out to the side, palm down. Slide that right shoulder blade under your back. You're gonna look towards your, le your right fingertips. So your right ear drops towards the mat. Keeping that right shoulder blade nice and anchored, we're gonna draw, slowly draw the left knee across, I'm sorry, the right knee across the left side, towards the left side of the body. Nice word salad there. And breathe. Once again, just keep that right shoulder blade pinned down. And you can inhale and back off just a little bit. And then exhale, maybe move a little deeper into the twist. Just do that a few more times. Inhale, back off. Exhale, twist. Breathing into that resistance in that right hip. And you can feel it all the way back in towards the right buttocks. Now deep into the glutes. And we'll slowly unwind, bringing that right foot back down to the mat. Ah, straighten your left arm out to the side, bend your left knee, bringing your feet back to the mat and just pause. Ah, big breath here. All right, we'll lift the hips up. And just move them back to center. Take a breath. And then we'll lift the hips up again and move them a couple inches to the left. Straighten the right leg. Bring your right hand to the left knee. Left foot comes off the ground. And you'll bring your left arm out like a kickstand. Slide that left shoulder blade under the back, palm down, and look towards your left fingertips. Take a breath. And slowly our left knee crosses over towards the right side of the body. Inhale back off a little, exhale, twist a little deeper. Breathing into that left hip. Couple more breaths.
And we'll slowly unwind, bringing the head up, bringing that left foot back down to the mat. Uh, all right, bend the right knee. Both feet are on the ground now. And lift up the hips and bring them back to center. Hmm. All right, let's straighten out one leg, followed by the other. Bring our hands down to our sides. Wiggle those shoulder blades under the back. And gently just wiggle into the hips. Deep breath. Mm, wiggle the fingers and toes. Release the jaw. Ah, you're just letting go any resistance in the body. And then you're just going to completely surrender to the mat. Just moving into Shavasana. And we'll spend about three or four minutes here. It's just observing yourself letting go. Just finding that rhythmic breath. In and out of the nose. Just gently watching the belly inhale and exhale. As you deepen your breath, just allowing gentle movements to return to the body. And just roll over onto your side into fetal posture, just taking a couple breaths there. And eventually making your way up to a seated position.
Let's bring the hands together at the heart. And as you squeeze the hands, just feeling this balance between the right and left side. Allow your shoulder blades to pull together onto the back body. And just take a couple breaths, just honoring the heart space. Namaste. Namaste.